When you have a very basic circuit like this, when you've got some kind of supply and a single resistor, then you'd expect the maximum power to occur when this resistor is at its lowest. Because Ohm's law tells us that the current is your voltage divided by resistance. So the lower this, this resistance is, then the higher the current. And of course the power is the voltage times the current. So the higher the current, the higher the power. But that's not the case, and I'm going to explain why. Okay, so the thing that's missing on this circuit is this device here is missing this. We are ignoring the fact that this circuit will have some kind of output impedance. Just like when you've got an amplifier driving some speakers, the amplifier itself will have some form of output impedance. It's inherent in the circuitry of this. So let's go back to our circuit and we will call this our Z load or our load impedance and this Z out, our output impedance. And now let's put some example figures in for that. So let's imagine that the load impedance is 10 ohms and our output impedance is 40 ohms. The reason I picked these is purely because it makes the maths nice and easy to demonstrate. And let's assume that we are running this device here at 100 volts. So that would be 100 volts RMS. So we put that into there. So the total impedance of the circuit of a whole, as a whole is now 50 ohms, 40 plus the, plus the 10. That means the current, which is 100 volts, divided by the total resistance or total impedance, now gives us two amps. So we know there's two amps running in that whole circuit. And if we put a voltmeter across that, we now know that we've got a 10 ohm, a 10 ohm load and we've got two amps running through that. So the voltage across that load is two amps times our 10 ohms, giving us a voltage of 20 volts across that load. So if we just record that then in our circuits, we've got our 20 volts and we've got two amps in this AC circuit here. And if you remember, power is volts times the current. Therefore, the power in this circuit is 20 volts times the two amps that we've already calculated, gives us a power rating of 40 watts. There's 40 watts being transferred from this supply to this load. So let's just keep a note of that. So we know that when we had 10 ohms, we had 40 watts of power. But now let's match the load impedance with the output impedance and see what we get. So we've now got a total impedance of the circuit of 80 ohms, the 40 plus the 40. That means our current is 100 volts divided by our resistance or impedance of 80 ohms gives us 1.25 amps of current. And therefore the voltage across here, and bearing in mind we know it's 40 ohms and we've got 1.25 amps of current, then the voltage across that, that load is 50 volts now. So the power is now 50 volts times our 1.25 amps of current that we've already worked out. So the power now is 62.5 watts. That's 22 and a half watts more than when we had just 10 ohms of impedance on the output load. So there you go, matching the impedance does give you more power. Now let's have a look at if that works in all scenarios then. So I put together this Excel chart and what we have, we've got currently got a output impedance of 50 ohms, which we can change. And we've got a supply voltage or V out of 100 volts. Down the bottom, I've got various load impedance scaling from zero to 100 ohms. And on the Y axis here, I've got the output in watts, which is calculated from these two figures in exactly the same way as I've just shown you. So at the moment with 50 ohms output impedance and a supply of 100 volts, then the output maxes at 50 ohms. Here's 50 ohms load impedance here. That's where it maxes out and then it starts to curve off. So if I change this output impedance now to say 30 ohms, then we max out again at the same, the same as our output impedance. There's 30 ohms there. You can see that it peaks at that point. Let's go down a bit further. Let's go to say 10 ohms and at 10 ohms load impedance, it maxes out with the power. Let's go the other way. Let's go higher than 50 
let's go to say 80. So 80 ohms down on this scale there, that's where it's maxing out. Okay, works every time. That's, that's how we maximize the power transfer from our supply to our output device, match the impedance. So that's a quick explanation of why we match impedance in terms of power output. There are other factors why we match impedance, mainly to do with reflections coming back down the line, but that's an entirely different subject. I'll cover that in another video. But hopefully you now understand an important factor, which is to maximize your output power. And if you found this video of use, please click like. And if you haven't done so already, click the subscribe too. All right, catch you later.